Hello, my name is Susana Aguilera. My um, topic is candida endocarditis after the ABR introduction. I most cause post surgical infection are caused by microorganisms that interfere with um, patented complete discovery and they are usually very harmful to with obstetric dispersal suits of diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol, and obesity amounts. Obstetric ops are the most likely to be exposed to this day of infection. Today, we about candida endocarditis after the uh, ears as the way we are definition need. What is the candida endocarditis? Candida endocarditis is a serious form of candida over heart are cases of forward endocarditis are cases with candida the foreign organisms distribution was not the easy to zero zero one revive of two seven zero cases of fungal endocarditis who is the world literature. Organic distribution. Candida albinga 2 percent knows albinga species of candida to exist person. Aspergum species two and four percent. Histus plasma capsulans to six percent. As well. Candida sometimes causes a mild yeast infection, but in some situations it can get into the bloodstream and cause severe illness. Now, there are various types of candida species, and over 20 of them can cause disease in humans. There's C. albicans, C. parasilosis, C. tropicalis, C. glabrata, C. crusae, C. oris, and the list goes on. Of these, the most common one is C. albicans, Candida is found throughout the body. It likes warm, moist environments like the mouth, the diaper region of babies, and in women it can be found in the vagina. Now, it's normal for microbes like bacteria, fungi, and viruses to live all over the body, but each microbe is slightly different in terms of whether it's colonizing the body, in other words, just living and not causing any problems, or whether it's infecting the body, which is causing some degree of tissue damage or destruction. An important factor is exactly how much of a microbe is present. Candida is considered an opportunistic microbe. When the amount of candida is relatively low, it's harmless. But if a person's immune system is weakened, or if there's less competition for the candida, then the amount of candida can increase, and that's called candida overgrowth. Now, candida can exist in multiple forms. It's kind of like a chameleon. All candida species can take on a round or oval shape, and these are called yeast cells. One candida species, called candida albicans, can also appear like pseudohyphae, where it looks like long, thin filaments, kind of like a segmented cactus plant. So these two shapes of candida albicans express different protein profiles, and they give the cells different properties. In yeast mode, Candida is better at moving from one part of the body to another, whereas in filamentous mode, it's better at invading tissues. Candida typically lives on the skin or mucous membranes, and when it starts to overgrow, it can damage nearby tissue. With this, there are a few patterns of injury. The most common one is pseudomembranous candidiasis, and it's primarily due to a weakened immune system that allows for candida overgrowth. The result is destruction of the stratified squamous epithelium layer, which is the outermost layer of the skin or mucous membranes. 
This causes accumulation of the destroyed cells in the keratin protein that fills the outermost layer, forming a white lesion called a pseudomembrane that looks kind of like cottage cheese. The white lesions aren't typically painful, and they can be scraped away with a tongue depressor, leaving behind a red mucosal base which sometimes bleeds. Since the underlying cause is a weakened immune system, it's fairly common in young infants and the elderly, both groups that have a relatively weak immune system. It can also be related to an immunosuppressive condition, like diabetes or HIV, or from immunosuppressive medical treatments, like steroids, including inhaled steroids, as well as radiotherapy or chemotherapy. Another pattern of injury is called erythematous candidiasis, and that typically results from a change in the levels of microbial competition keeping candida in check. For example, a course of antibiotics or tobacco smoking, which both selectively destroy certain bacterial populations more than they affect candida. The opposite is true as well. Sometimes there are mechanical devices like braces that favor candida growth more than the growth of other microbes. In either situation, the result is an overgrowth of candida, which causes increased blood flow to the affected tissue with red painful lesions. In a lot of situations, there's a mixed pattern of injury with both a pseudomembranous and erythematous component. Was is as the RV ears transcatheter or the barbara represent the RV ears is a precure this reflexes a disorder or the barbara will among more barbara or the barbara replanser can also be performed with open heart. Surgery, this precure is surgical or the barbule represent CRV ears. The TRV ear is made with the aortic barbule control. Blue flow from the heart to the body becomes a stiff, a stiff condition called aortic stenosis. The heart, me hard to work, too hard to pull, blocks, thrones, the smart, barbarly open, the rest of the body is my layer, increasing heart, pilotry. Candida endocarditis after TRVs. Uh, inflammation of the inner liver of the barbule and cardiac chamber is caused by a forward infection. Candida, there is an enormous information about each incidence. It's the usually of school and the four months. After on the intervention, the infection endocarditis after TRV is international registered inclusive patient with definite infect infectivity endocarditis after TRV is flows is the four, uh, four sevenths center from Europe, North America, and South of the America with January 2005 and October 2015. This is an animation showing transcatheter aortic valve replacement through the transfemoral approach using the Edward Sapien III transcatheter heart valve. The heart's main function is to pump blood to the rest of your body. The heart contains four valves. Normal valves have two or three flaps of tissue called leaflets that open and close like gates to control the flow of blood through your heart. It's important to know that if you have aortic stenosis, your aortic valve narrows due to calcium buildup. This prevents the valve from fully opening which blocks blood flow from your heart to the rest of the body. As a result of the reduced blood flow, the body does not get the oxygen it needs, 
which can lead to symptoms. Aortic stenosis is a progressive disease, which means it gets worse over time. It's typically measured as mild, moderate, or severe. The only effective treatment for severe aortic stenosis is to have your aortic valve replaced. Today, there are two options for replacement, open-heart surgery or less invasive transcatheter aortic valve replacement, also known as TAVR. During the TAVR procedure, you may be placed under anesthesia. Once under anesthesia, a small incision will be made in your leg, where your doctor will insert a short hollow tube, called a sheath, into your femoral artery. Sometimes as a first step during the TAVR procedure, Balloon aortic valvuloplasty, also known as BAV, is performed in order to open your narrowed calcified valve. Once the sheath is in place, your doctor will guide a catheter with the balloon on the end of it up to your aortic valve. Once the balloon catheter reaches your aortic valve, the balloon is inflated to open your narrowed calcified valve. The balloon catheter is then deflated and pulled back from the aortic valve. During the next step, your new transcatheter heart valve is crimped onto a delivery catheter, which makes the valve small enough to fit through a sheath, so it can be delivered to your heart. Using a special type of x-ray, your doctor will guide the delivery catheter carrying the new valve through the sheath and up to your aortic valve. The balloon of the delivery catheter is inflated with fluid, expanding the new valve within your diseased valve pushing the old leaflets aside. The balloon is then deflated and the delivery catheter is removed, leaving your new heart valve in place. The frame of the Edward Sapien III transcatheter heart valve is strong and will use the calcified leaflets of your diseased valve to secure it in place. Once in place, the Sapien III valve begins functioning immediately with the leaflets opening and closing to pump blood to the rest of your body. The most serious risks of the TAVR procedure are death, major stroke, major vascular complications, and life-threatening bleeding. If you or someone you know has severe aortic stenosis, only a TAVR heart team can determine which treatment option is best for you. Um, most of the patients are younger age, malic sex, history of diabetes mellitus, and of moderate to severe residual aortic regulation are well significantly associated with in increased risk of infective endocarditis patients or developing endocarditis harm. Here, risk of insta hospital mortality and two-year mortality. Um, symptoms. No specific relative symptom has been identified. Most of the patients are and uh, is asymptomatic. Of first patient might have fever or showing harm. Uh, diagnostic and treatment. The diagnostic of fungal endocarditis in Shadowing or diagnostic of prosthetics, barbary fungal endocarditis is extremely difficult. The optimal anti therapies still remain debatable. Treatment candida endocarditis can be difficult because the candida species come from biofilm of native and the prostector heart barbary convenience tratament after superior to monotherapy combination of anti therapy and surgical debriment membrane about boxer chronic. Thank you very much.